Hello there. In this third video I'm going to look at taking a passive violin, which I discussed in the last video, the difference between passive and active, but basically there's no battery on a passive instrument and no onboard electronics. And I'm going to use um, a DI, an acoustic DI. Usually these are listed on, on the internet as acoustic guitar DIs. DI stands for direct input, so it's like a direct input interface. The one I'm going to use is this one, which I've had for many years. It's a Fishman um, G2. Um, but I see now there are a number of them. Bags make them. There's the bags one, quite expensive that, £209. Um, Behringer make one at a ridiculously cheap price, £20. So there we are, there, there are lots of them out there that you can have a look at and decide. But basically what you've got to do is you've got to think about matching the signal that comes out of this thing, which is high impedance, to the signal that either your guitar amplifier or your mixing desk is expecting to receive and generally that's a low impedance signal so you've got to balance the two otherwise you lose a lot of the frequency coming out of the violin you lose most of the bass it just drops off completely and you end up with a tinny screechy sort of sound so I'm going to play this directly into the mixing desk to show you what that sounds like and then I'm going to plug in this um, this this interface device um, this acoustic interface which will balance the impedance of this instrument to the desk so the desk will be quite happy with the signal that's coming in and it will actually allow the bass frequencies to come through so you'll be able to hear the difference hopefully then I'll use another piece of kit this one here this graphic equalizer um, this is a low cost 20 quid job 20 pounds um, Behringer once again I'll use that to shape the sound of the violin so you can hear how I can improve the tone overall and um, then perhaps add a little bit of reverb and then you can hear exactly the difference that will make. So basically I shall try and improve the sound of the violin as we go through each stage. Now you may be asking yourself, well, why do you need to do that? Well the reason is because piezo pickups, which are very very efficient and very good, um, are incredibly bright in the tone that they achieve and they pick up every sound going out of the violin so that when you play them they'll, they'll pick up the bowing noise as well now of course you wouldn't naturally hear that with an acoustic violin because the sound of the bow is sort of dampened by the air as the sound of the instrument travels to your ears the sound of the bowing is not amplified in any way it's sort of dampened in a way by the the natural acoustics of the room that you're playing in so you don't tend to notice it but you do when you play an amplified instrument the sound uh, of the bow it gives it a sort of um, sort of raspy sound well I'll point that out to you anyway to to give you an idea what I'm talking about. So this is my typical passive instrument. It's got no built-in effects or electronics. It's just purely got a piezo strip underneath the bridge there. I got that from eBay, stuck it underneath this bridge. And that's fed purely to a quarter inch jack coming out of here, going into my mixing desk. Be back in a mo and I'll plug it in. Right, now I've plugged this into my mixing desk. All of the settings on the mixing desk are completely set to zero. So there's no treble and no bass being added or subtracted from the sound that's coming out from here. So what you hear 
um, now it's going to be exactly the sound of this violin without anything, any effects at all added to it. So, you probably noticed immediately that would not be acceptable. If you were playing like that on stage with a violin that sounded like that, I don't think the audience members or the dancers would be too pleased with that sound. So, you can hear the bass is, is removed from the sound. Also, it sounds quite scratchy. And that's the fact that the piezo is picking up the bowing noise. You can hear it slightly more on the on the lower strings. It's a sort of raspy sound. That's the sound of the individual fibres being pulled across the string, and the piezo is is faithfully re reproducing that sound. Okay, so now I'll plug in the um, interface, the direct interface box, this thing and we'll see what it sounds like. Be back with you in a moment. Okay, so now I've plugged this in, this little interface. <coughs> I've also plugged in my um, low-cost Behringer graphic equaliser, but I'm not switching that on for a moment because I want to compare that afterwards but at the moment the signal is just purely going through this box of tricks but it's not being used so we've just purely got the sound from this interface going through the desk which is all set clean and straight to the um, to uh, Reaper which is my um, digital audio workstation or sequencer which is basically recording everything on the computer that I'm playing Oh, so this is the sound now with the box switched on. too bad. In fact it doesn't, it doesn't need an awful lot more doing to it really but there's still a slight amount of harshness in that sound. I, I think that would be a little bit too bright if I were playing like that across a large PA. And I think that's because the piezo does faithfully reproduce all of the sound that it hears through the vibrations. It's, it's the vibrations travelling down the bridge into the piezo which is compressing and decompressing the, the piezo which is creating a small electrical charge which is then travelling through this long cable and there's, there's no hum that I can hear and straight into this um, direct input. So uh, I, I think that would be a little bit too harsh. So the next thing is the graphic equaliser, that's where this comes in. <clears throat> I've got this set, I've reduced the um, frequency below 100 hertz because that's where a lot of the bowing noise is being transferred. A lot of the noise that you hear from the bow is set below about 100 hertz. So I've, I've dropped that down a tad. And I've also brought the higher frequencies down a bit to reduce the, uh, the shrill sound of the violin. So I'll switch that on now and let's have a listen to that. Thank you. 
okay, there's another new, a new tune was just born there. Never heard that tune before, <clears throat> never played it before. It just came out of my head. But anyway, I think you can agree, the violin sounds a little bit sweeter now. Now, of course, I can tinker around with this, this graphic, because it gives me lots of options to play around with the thing. And I can, I can get the sound really to sound exactly how I like it, because strangely enough, um, no two violins are exactly the same. The arrangement of the pickup, the thickness of the bridge, the, 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 the actual body that, of the instrument can all affect the way that, that the instrument sounds. And my other violin here, which is also a passive, um, does sound slightly different to this one. So I would need to adjust the graphic again on um, this violin, if I were using this one, to the setting for this one. So what I do nowadays, <clears throat> to make life slightly easier for myself, I use my camera on my phone and I take a quick photograph of the setting for this particular instrument and then I'll figure out the best setting for the other one and take another photograph. So it quickly gives me a way of recalling the settings that I prefer. Now you can improve the sound slightly more again if you have some access to reverb or digital delay. Now um, I noticed there are some very cheap um, reverb units available for uh, 20 pounds or so once again that can be bought or in this instance as this is my little studio I've got an old um, unit here, rack system, which I think I only paid about £15 for, but it's got a nice reverb on it. So I'm going to switch that on and I can just add a small amount of reverb to my signal. So let's have a listen to that. That's with no reverb. And I'm just adding a small amount there. So let's see what that's like now. Purposely played, played two strings at once there because sometimes piezo pickups tend to send out too much signal strength if you play two strings and they can sometimes distort the sound. And um, I purposely tried not to increase the, the volume too much through this sort of signal chain from the DI box through to the graphic through to the desk. I've tried to keep the volume um, set to the middle range because if you go too high with the volume it sounds great but it also can distort as well which may not be what you want to achieve particularly if you're playing in a Cayley band or something like that where you want to have a fairly clean sound um, so it's a good thing. If Obviously if you're in a rock band and you want a lot of distortion well just just turn the volume up, no problem. But there we go. That's that gives you some um, way of comparing um, the difference between using a direct input box and a little bit of graphic equalization. Um, it, it, it it makes a huge difference to the sound, particularly for a passive instrument. Now when it comes to an active instrument, I'll just show you one. <clears throat> this, is, this is an active instrument. This has got its own um, built-in um, amplification, or pre-amplifier I should say. Um, this, this has a tone control and a volume control, and it's got a little bit of electronics built into it with a, with a jack output. This actually is far better balanced. This is more balanced to the desk. But I'll 
I'll demonstrate an active violin in my next video, so you can compare. Thank you very much for watching. I think that's covered everything. There are, are quite a lot of things that you can, you can do um, if you're recording into um, a computer like this um, on the post-processing side. So in other words, once the signal comes in from the desk, once the sound of your violin reaches your sequencer, your door program, when this, this one's Reaper, once it reaches there, you can do quite a lot more things with it. And that will be in a further um, video where I discuss recording techniques because obviously there are, there are lots of things you can do with, um, uh, with the sound of your violin once it, once, it, once it gets onto the computer. Okay, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you for part four, hopefully. Bye-bye now.